Welcome back to this channel for practice problems for actuarial exams. My name is Krzysztof Wostoszewski. You can find information about me at smarturl.it forward slash Jedi. My advice on how to pass actuarial exams is at smarturl.it forward slash pass. This video channel is at smarturl.it forward slash pass actuarial exams. Here you have information about online seminars and study manuals for exams PFM, IFM, and LTAM that I offer. I direct the actuarial program at Illinois State University. You can find information about it at smarturl.it forward slash actuary. If you would like to offer a tax deductible donation to support our students, please go to smarturl.it forward slash help ISU actuary. Here's a problem for today for exam IFM. Consider a forward start option which one year from today will give its owner a one year European call option with a strike price equal to the stock price at that time. You are given the European call option is on a stock that pays no dividends. The stock volatility is 30%. The forward price for delivery of one share of the stock one year from today is 100. The continuously compounded risk free interest rate is 8%. Under the Black Shoals framework, determine the price today of the forward start option. Let us write S1 for the stock price at the end of one year. Apply the Black Shoals formula to calculate the price of the at the money call one year from today, conditional on S1. So um, at the money, meaning that the uh, exercise price is the same as the price then. And therefore, for that um, application of Black Scholes formula, the parameter d1 will be equal to the natural logarithm of s1 divided by s1, and so that's zero because it's the natural logarithm of one, plus r plus one half sigma squared times t. And uh, t is one year from now, and the uh, um, I decided to plug in the numbers to show you what the calculation exactly is, uh, and I noticed also that um, it should have said r plus one half sigma squared there, so my apologies for initial typo, but this becomes then 0.08 plus one half times 0.3 squared over 0.3, and that's approximately 0.41666667. Um, and then this is, of course, independent of S1. We also have D2 equal to D1 minus sigma square root of T, and that's the same as D1 minus uh, sigma, so uh, point, uh, Four one and so on, uh, six six and, uh, minus point three, so approximately point one one six six seven. Therefore, the value of the forward start option at time one, given just by the standard Black Scholes formula, would be s one times n of d one plus s one times e to the minus r times n of d two. We plug in those values of d one and d two, and um, the um, present value of exercise price based on S1 being the exercise price. This is uh, e to the minus 0.08 uh, coefficient. Uh, we uh, put S1 in front of everything. We factor it out. And this becomes approximately 0.157112 S1. Note that when viewed from time zero, S1 is a random variable. The time zero price of the forward start option must be 0 0.157112 multiplied by the time zero price of a security that gives S1 as the payoff at time one. And that actually is the prepaid forward price at time zero for delivery, of course, at time one at the price uh, S1. Uh, well, the value of that security at time one will be S1 that random variable. And hence the time zero price of the forward start option is simply uh, 0 0.17, uh, 157112 times the prepaid forward price. But we're not given the prepaid forward price in the problem, we're given the forward price. It's 100. And how do the two relate? Well, the prepaid forward price on the non 
dividend paying stock is simply the current price in the market. So this is just the current price in the market. How does it relate to the forward price? Well, the forward price is equal to the current price in the market accumulated at the risk-free rate. Therefore, the prepaid forward price um, is equal to um, the forward price discounted at the risk-free rate. So e to the minus 0 0.08 times the forward price, and the forward price is given as 100, so we plug it in and we get 14.5033 uh, approximately. So the key nice thing in this process of pricing the forward start option turned out that D1 and D2 are independent of the stock price. This is always the case when the strike price of the call option is set as a fixed percentage of the stock price at the issue date of the call option. And this result is answer C. Please remember this is copyrighted material. The problem itself comes from the Society of Actuaries. The solution is mine. Good luck in your studies and good luck on the test.